well. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to clear up a little mystery. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Emergency crews needed. There's great damage done nationwide, worldwide. And it goes way beneath the surface and way above the land. You wonder what kind of damage is that, don't you? Listen to this. I'm going to explain in a minute. But this is what you need to know about the solution to that damage. Now, there was an issue. And the people in town watched this man do great works, couldn't believe their eyes. And they wondered, they said amongst themselves, is not this, now this is Mark chapter 6, verse 3. This is the magic question. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and, jo and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Now, my point is verse 3. They could not figure out how this simple, nobody of a carpenter could be doing all these wonderful works, all these miracles. They couldn't figure this thing out didn't make sense to them. This is a carpenter, y'all. Hello. Now, I'm going to share with you what Webster says. I know you want to know what the heck does that have to do with anything. It has to do with everything. Listen to this. When I read the word, because I wanted to make sure the revelation I had was right, and it is. Listen to this, you guys. What is a carpenter? Why the heck would, didn't God bring him down as a surgeon? Why didn't God bring him down as a, a I don't know, a, a, a great prophet? No. He brought him here to work with his hands as a carpenter. How inglorious can you get? For the Son of God. Well, listen to what Webster's definition of carpenter is a person who makes 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 creates like God created okay let me read a person who makes and repairs wooden objects and structures now wood is not a glorious thing to work with wood is porous wood, wood can be brittle I mean you know, I mean, wood can give splinters. Yeah, it, can has, it has a whole lot of things working against it. But it is a natural object that God created. And it always comes up with flaws. Even in furniture, the finest furniture will break down over time. Well, Jesus being a repairer of wooden objects and structures, what does that tell you about you and me? Hmm? How many repairs do you need, baby cakes? How much healing do you need, sugar weed? Hmm? Yeah. How much deep-seated work do you need done? I'm still getting worked on. I'm a work in progress. Because there was a whole lot of damage done in this bad boy. Now, I want you to look at that. And I want you to see, no matter how broken you are, 
no matter how dejected you feel, no matter how, uh, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? No matter how your self-image has deteriorated over time because of the likes of you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you, babe, nothing about you is beyond the ability of Jesus to repair, to rebuild, to recreate. Think about it. Now think. Think of all the things that you and I have thrown out. Because in our mind's eye, they're worthless. Think about the furnitures and, and the objects we've thrown out. Because they came apart. They broke. They malfunctioned. There is nothing that Jesus cannot repair. I say that, listen, I want you to hear the power of God. Have you ever felt like you were sinking so low, like you have stooped so low that you are beyond the depths of the gutter? Excuse me. Have you ever felt that when people look down on you, you couldn't crawl any lower to get out of their eyesight. You have gone as low as you can go. You have disappointed your family. You've disappointed yourself. You've disappointed your friends. You just seem to be one big disappointment. Now, here you are sinking, right? You're sinking into the depths of despair, into the depths of hopelessness. I'm making a point, so listen. Do you know there is a story in the Old Testament? I'm not a Bible scholar, so don't ask me where it is. But anyway, in the Old Testament, where uh uh, somebody asked the prophet to help them. They had run into a buzzsaw. They were hitting the thing with the axe. And the axe was not theirs. It was borrowed from a friend. And they had to get the axe back. And I think either the head broke off or the axe fell out of the hand. I don't have that story clear. But one thing I know bad boy dropped into the lake or the river and sunk too deep for anybody to find now you know metal is going to sink in water you know that mm -hmm. just like you seem to be doing as we speak sinking below 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 hopeless one big disappointment after another how much further down can a person go? Well, listen. When you feel like you're so out of God's reach, when you feel like God's arms are too short, that God wouldn't even want to reach down that far, he's like, hey, I got my limit, baby. I don't go, homie, don't play that. I don't go but so far. So you go beyond the point of no return. Sorry, Charlie. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Yeah, check this out. The prophet raised his hand over the water. And guess what? The power of God moved in him. And that axe boop, 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 floated to the surface and stayed there until the man was able to reach his hand and retrieve it. Yes, you are retrievable. Yes, there is hope for you. 
You're still on the face of this planet, baby. You're still walking, talking, breathing, and existing, living, whatever you call it. But you are still here. And as long as you are still here, there is still hope for you. Because God's power is way more powerful than all your failures packed into one. I'm going to leave you with that. Go to the carpenter to get your repairs. I'm telling you, he wants to put you back together again. Let him. <laughs>